What's going on guys? This is Gains Gaming. Today we are talking about Alexander the Great and whether or not he is a commander that you should be investing in in KVK2 for Season of Conquest. This topic has been highly requested since I started making videos about Season 2 commanders, such as the video on Saladin I just posted recently. So with Alexander the Great, obviously he is another KVK2 commander, this time focusing on infantry. And Alexander the Great is a commander that is extremely good in KVK2. As you can see, in my time using him, I have 44 million kills just from Alexander the Great, which is fantastic for me. This is actually my highest killing commander so far, even including like my Nevsky, my Joan, my Boudica. He still outperforms all of them based off of how well he did in KVK2 and KVK3 for me, especially when I migrated back to KVK2 quite some time ago. So today I want to dive deep into Alexander the Great, talk about whether or not he is still worth investing into, because as you can see, I do have him expertise at this point. And, you know, like I said, he is a KVK2 commander, but he is still usable in Season of Conquest. So we are going to kind of talk about the different options you have uh, with Alexander the Great or other commanders you could invest into and what pairings would be the best fit for him in Season of Conquest. So before we get started, I want to also talk about the museum buff that Alexander the Great recently got. You can see he got an extra 10% infantry defense, as well as a 3% normal attack damage reduction. Not super strong, but you know, it's a good bonus, especially if you were using him in the open field. Personally, I have been kind of mixing in Alexander the Great into my marches. Currently, I run five marches. I run two infantry, two cavs, and one archer. And the two infantry marchers I use kind of fluctuate. So I'm either using Pakal Herald with Guan and Scipio, or depending on what the field looks like, I am switching up to Scipio with Herald and Guan with Alex. So I do sometimes still run Alex in the open field with a Guan primary, which is still a pretty decent option. Obviously not the most meta pairing with Guan or with Alex, but it is still a very decent pairing that could trade very, very well. And like I said before, I mean, my Alexander the Great does trade well. He does get a lot of kills. His instant proc damage is fantastic. That's one of my favorite things about him, as well as having the extra shields is really, really helpful to help buff your other troops. And, you know, the extra march speed and the extra attack is phenomenal. And then on top of here, they did actually redo the skill uh, just the, the text of the skill, not how it actually performs. You can see if this commander's troop has a shield, it gains 40% attack. If it does not have a shield, it gains 30% defense. The way it was written before actually it seemed like it was the other way around. But now we know that when he does not have a shield, he is actually gaining 30% defense, which is pretty important actually when you look into the grand scheme of things around Alexander the Great, because that was one reason why people were kind of hesitant to still use him is because he was losing 30% defense anytime that he was attacking and so that's kind of where that was coming into play but now we understand it's actually the other way around and it was just the the, tra the translation that was probably mixed up in some capacity with a lot of the different commanders that they reworked um but like i said the skill still works the same it's just kind of phrased differently essentially um but you know alexander the great he is amazing in kvk2 but we want to talk about his viability in season of conquest because if you're not investing in commanders strictly for kvk2 you, you're going to spend a majority of your time in the game playing in Season of Conquest unless you were consistently and constantly migrating back to KVK2, which I strongly advise you not to do because, you know, the game is Season of Conquest. It's, it's not KVK2. There's a reason why you're only supposed to do KVK2 once is because 90% of the commanders you're going to be using are Season of Conquest commanders, and they're just the ones that are way more fun to use. And the newest commanders, you know, you want to have the newest stuff that's how everyone is so you know alexander the great he is very very old at this point i unlocked him in 2020 and so it's, it's been a while since i've unlocked him almost almost three years now actually over three years since i unlocked alexander the great and uh it, it actually doesn't even say when i expertised him because i expertise him so long ago but alexander the great like i said he is very very good at kills and the other thing he's really good at is city popping so he is a phenomenal march for city popping. I know a lot of people that love using Harold with Alex for city popping. They like to use Charles with Alex. You can use Scipio Alex for city popping. But, you know, I want to talk about open field, not city popping. So 
When it comes to Alexander the Great and the usability in the open field, like I said, Guan is a great pairing with Alexander the Great. They have decent synergy where, you know, Guan is going to have a benefit of having the shields from Alex, although you are going to have to have that expertise. So for me, I don't get that benefit with Guan Alex, but a lot of people that do have Guan expertise will get that benefit from running Alex. That way you don't have to run a lucky coin because, you know, you'd much rather have other stuff on your Guan Yu. But when it comes to other pairings that are actually still very, very viable, Scipio is another really solid option. And one thing I do recommend for people is running a budget march when you get into Season of Conquest. And what I mean by that is if you are planning on running one to three infantry marches, which on average people are running maybe one or two, um, unless you're like an infantry main, but at this point you shouldn't be for open field. But say you're running one or two infantry marches, Alexander the Great could definitely fit into those two marches. And what you could do is when you get into KVK2, you could invest into Alexander the Great, you can spin the wheel, you can put universal heads into him, you can max him out. And then after maxing out Alexander the Great, save your sculptures and save your sculptures for Scipio. And Scipio is going to be a great pairing with Alexander the Great, Scipio primary, Alex secondary. And you know, it's not meta, but it is a very solid pairing. And it's an option that you can run in Season of Conquest that will still trade very, very well with Alexander the Great, and he is still very usable. Some other options you would have with Alexander the Great, instead of investing into Scipio, a couple different options you could run. Like I said, Guan would be a very viable option. If you wanna go super, super cheap, you could still run Charles Martel with Alex. Don't recommend that for Season of Conquest though. It just does not have really much viability. You're not gonna do as much damage. Um, but as we go down, we have another commander that is relatively new. Well, actually very, very new, Luce. Luce Alex is actually one of the most favorable combos that I've seen in the open field lately. And, you know, Luce is a, a great pairing with Alexander the Great. Because, uh, you know, he is going to have the area effect damage that Alexander the Great lacks. He's also going to make the troops hit by the skill, lose 20% march speed, which then allows you to do more damage to them. And, you know, 40% march speed is insane. Like, I'm excited to, to max out Luce and start using him, but... Luce Alex is a very solid combination for the open field and definitely something that's viable for you to use when you enter Season of Conquest. And then what you could do is eventually you can switch out your Alexander the Great with Scipio and run a Luce Scipio combo, which is a very, very good infantry pair in the open field. And honestly, if you were running one infantry march in the open field, I would say it's in between Luce and Scipio and Guan Scipio. But Personally, if I were to, if I was starting the game over and just entering Season of Conquest, and I could max two of the commanders, either Luce and Scipio or Guan Scipio, I would probably lean toward Luce. And the reason why is just because he's the newest commander, right? It Typically, the newest commanders are going to have the most longevity, and Guan is a much older commander. I know this is kind of going back on what I said in my previous video about, you know, the, the top three commander pairings, but like I said in that video too, like, there's only it's only a matter of time till Guan Yu is considered irrelevant. Uh, you know, eventually every commander, especially these older ones, are going to become irrelevant eventually. Like he's still good, he's still very good at that, but he he is gonna lose his viability here in the next probably year or two, I would say, probably even sooner than that. So that's why I'm looking at you know eventually investing into Luce. But Luce and Alex is a very solid combination that you can run in Season of Conquest and still trade extremely well. I've actually seen people trade better with Luce Alex than Luce with Scipio. Because, uh, you know, Alexander the Great has a single target damage and Scipio has AoE. So I guess you might see individual reports looking better. But overall, like your AoE value is going to be much better with Scipio. Um, although breaking up your, your Scipio and your Luce and having two infantry marches, that'd be great as well such as a Guan with Scipio and then a Luce Alex, that'd be a great two pair for infantry as well. Now that begs the question, should you invest into Alexander the Great in KVK2? And I'm gonna pose the same question I posed in the Saladin video, is if you are ever planning on migrating back to KVK2, this is a 100% absolute must max. But if you are not planning on migrating back to KVK2 and you do not plan on running more than one infantry march, if you are not planning on running at least two infantry marches, you should not max Alex. He's great, but he is not great enough for you to 
put that much into him if you're not going to run more than two infantry marches. And the reason why is just because he's not the second best infantry commander, like not by a long shot. He's probably fourth or fifth, I would say. Uh, maybe maybe top three, depending on what you're looking at. But I would probably put him at fourth or fifth right now with, you know, Luce entering the game. And so he's he's not top two. He's probably not top three. And so at that, like, why would you even consider investing in him if you're only running two infantry commanders and one total pairing? Then it wouldn't make any sense to invest in Alex. But if you are looking at investing into more than one pairing with infantry, Alexander the Great is still a great option for you. Yes, there are better options, but with Season 2 Commanders, if you want to get started in Season 2 and actually be able to fight and get some good fighting in Season 2 and Season 3, Alexander the Great is still a great commander. You can pair him with Charles Martel, you can pair him with YSG, I mean, you can pair him with just about anybody in KVK2 and he'll trade very, very well. That's kind of the nice thing about the versatility with these KVK2 commanders, such as, you know, Saladin, Alexander the Great, YSG. These are all commanders that are very versatile where you can put them just about anybody and they will trade very, very well in the open field. Let me know what you guys think about Alexander the Great in the comments below. I know a lot of people have mixed feelings about Alex. Like personally, I love Alex, but you know, like I said, I, I brought up reasons why you should and why you shouldn't invest in Alexander the Great, what kind of players should invest in him and what kind of players should completely avoid Alexander the Great. Having the museum buff is a great benefit as well. But you know, like I said before, not really good enough to warrant actually using him in the open field. Uh, like, for example, the extra bonus to Metmed, like, literally took him from a bench commander to, like, okay, I might actually have to find a spot for Metmed. Like, that's how good his uh, relic is. Um, versus Alexander the Great, his isn't that great. So, um, no, no pun intended, but, uh, you know, 10% infantry defense and 3% normal attack damage reduction not amazing you know it's good if you're using him but it's not going to be like okay now i have to use alex but anyway if you guys enjoyed the video do me a favor and drop a like and subscribe let me know in the comments below what you guys think about alexander the great and if you are currently running him or if you are planning on investing into him if you are not yet in kvk2 looking forward to seeing that in the comments thanks for checking out the video